Okay guys, so I'm back with another really quick tutorial on how to do a simple overskirt with no tool underneath. Recorded this a while back, but I'm just now getting it up and I will also be doing you guys one later with how to insert your tool for a more full look. Okay, so these are the fabrics that you're gonna need and the materials. You're gonna need two to four yards of an overskirt fabric. I recommend a taffeta organza satin or chiffon. I use taffeta, stiff interfacing and hooks and eyes or clasp, but you need some type of closure. Okay, so you want to lay your fabric flat on the floor and with your selvages at the top and the bottom. And the selvages are the raw edges, if you don't know. And then you want to fold it over and then fold it over again. Okay, so now I'm going to measure out the height of my waistband. Um, I think I went with an inch and a half. And then I'm doing two pieces face together as opposed to folding one piece over. So I'm going to add a half an inch seam allowance for the top and a half an inch seam allowance for the bottom. So I ended up cutting it out at two and a half inches. So now that you have the height, you want to figure out the width of your waistband. So if the waist is 36 inches, then um, you want to, of course, do your waistband at 36 inches. You can even go a half an inch or inch smaller if you want it to fit really, really snug. Um, and if you want to overlap at the front, then make sure to add an allowance for that as well. So I measured this double my waist width, and then I'm just gonna cut it in half, but make sure you add the necessary seam allowances as well. So you wanna add a half inch on each side. So you wanna add an inch to it. So again, if your waist is 36 inches, then you wanna make sure you cut at 37 inches. So I just went on and cut double the 37 inches, and then I'm just gonna fold it in half and cut it. So go on ahead and take that tape measure and you want to measure the height that you decided on, um, whether you decided to do a one and a half inch waistband, two inch, three inch, whatever, it's totally up to you. So you just want to cut down and you want to pivot those scissors and you're going to cut at that height all the way down to the end. And look, I got y'all. So what I did was I'm speeding through all of the repetitive parts or the parts that just take so long to freaking do. Ooh, and fierce tip, guys. So instead of using a tape measure to measure all the way down, once you get a good cut, just take that fabric and flip it down. And you can just use that to continue to cut a straight line all the way down. Boom. And so I don't get confused. I always like to mark the top with a pen or a little mark. Now I'm going to take my interfacing. Um, I used a mid-weight woven interfacing. So I'm just going to fold it and I'm going to put my one of my strips on fold and I'm just going to cut it out using that. Okay, so now you wanna separate that strip from the interfacing, of course, and you wanna lay the strip down. We're only interfacing one strip. You want to lay the interfacing down, sticky side down, okay? Um, Cause you don't wanna stick it to your iron or your pressing cloth or your pillowcase because I am the queen of ghetto sewing, so I use a clean pillowcase. And what I do is I just hold it there for a few seconds um, just so it can adhere. You don't really need steam. Um, every now and then I'll use it depending on the type of interfacing that I have, but for the kind that has the little dots on the back of it, that usually seems less helpful to me. So um, I would advise only using steam if you have this type of interfacing. Could be wrong, but that's just my take on it. So you want to do this all the way down the strip, um, just making sure that it adheres good. And yeah, that's pretty simple. Okay, so now I'm going to mark where I want my overskirt to start. Um, I did five inches. I wanted a five inch opening in the front. So I left 2.5 inches on each side plus seam allowance. All right, and if you look back at the photo in the beginning of the video, I did leave that opening because she did want that in the front. She didn't want it to completely cover her. So you can leave however much you want if you want your um, skirt to start on the sides, but you want the waistband to still come all the way around. 
then of course you would measure out what amount you want to leave out. So say, okay, if I had um, a 36 inch waist, um, I would probably only do about 20 inches for my actual skirt fabric. So I would mark that other 16 inches off. So it would be eight inches on each side plus my seam allowance. I hope that made sense. So now on one side, starting where I did my five inch mark, I'm going to sew down to the end, well, a half an inch away from the end. And then I'm gonna pivot, sew down, pivot again, and sew down the entire length of my strip. I have another fierce tip for you guys. I know you love when I drop the gems in here, but if you're sewing two pieces of fabric together and one is stretch and one is non-stretch, you always want to sew, if you can, with the non-stretch fabric on top. And this is because your feed dogs will grab and distribute the stretch fabric underneath evenly, as opposed to you sewing it on the top and then it kind of gets bunched up and you have these puckers that don't look good. Um, so this is what I had to do with this because this taffeta did have a slight stretch to it. So I didn't want it to be bunched. I want it to lay flat and be neat and clean. So once you get to the end, you want to stop a half an inch away from the edge and you want to pivot again. And then you want to sew down and you want to pivot again. And remember, you're going to stop at whatever your mark is for your opening of the front of your overskirt. Now we're going to trim um, close to our corners just so when we flip it, it is neat and lays flat. A lot of people make this mistake of not trimming off the excess. And then when they try to flip it, it looks bulky and you don't get those sharp curves like you should. So that's what I'm doing. I'm not going to trim it all the way down, um, just close to the edge. Okay, now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna clip right up until that end of my stitch line. I'm gonna do this on both sides and this will help so when I do flip it inside out, well, you guys will see. Okay, so now you wanna just take it and you wanna flip it inside out, which is really right side out. And what you want to do is take your scissors or something that you can use to push out your corners. And if they still don't push out all the way, you can take a pin um, from the outside and kind of pull the fabric up until you get it to a point. Okay, so I didn't record it, but I did give it just a little quick press down just so it would um, be flat and it'll be easier for me to sew it down. Okay, so now we are going to locate where we pinned um, so we could keep up with the top of our fabric. And now we're going to go all the way down and find the bottom. So what we're going to do is a basic rolled hem. Um, I do a manual rolled hem across the bottom. Taffeta usually looks the same on both sides, so it doesn't matter which side is your front and which side is your back. But of course, um, if you're doing a different type of fabric that has two different, you know, looks or two different sheens on each side, then you definitely, definitely, definitely want to roll the opposite way of your outside. Okay, you know what time it is. It's time for another fierce tip. Okay, so um, a lot of people say that you definitely need an overlock machine or a serger to do nice finishes. And I used to feel the same way when I had one. But then when it went down, I had to kind of figure out how to do it. You know, so I use a roll hem on a lot of stuff, guys, even my Lycra. Um, but I'll do an in-depth video on that. But 
If you do not have an overlock machine, the way to get a neat finish is to do a rolled hem. Okay, so now we're going to go and do a rolled hem down both sides from the top of the skirt to the bottom of it. And please make sure that you are rolling the same way that you rolled for your bottom hem. Okay, so now that we are done um, with sewing down both sides, we are gonna go to our top and we're gonna change our stitch length to a five. And we're gonna pull our string out just a little bit so we can have a little extra hanging off. And then we're gonna sew all the way down a basting stitch or a gathering stitch, whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna sew all the way down across the top. Okay, so I'm gonna say this first. Please excuse how I'm chewing like a dog on horse in this next clip. I don't know what I was eating, but apparently it was absolutely delicious. But okay, now what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna mark about three inches, which is what I like to do, three inches from our edge so I can fold it over because I didn't do a lining. Um, I don't want that sewn edge to show. I want it to be folded under the overskirt while it's worn, if that makes sense. So I'm not gonna fold that right now. I'm just marking it so I know when I'm doing my gathering where to stop. So now you wanna grab um, your string one string not both of them because if you grab both of them then it will um it will get tangled so you want to grab one and you want to pull it and gently pull it because the thread will break if you pull it too hard so you just want to kind of keep easing that fabric down um and just hand gather it and then once we're done with that we're just gonna um go back and make sure that it's evenly distributed and that it matches the length of the opening of our waistband Okay, so now we are going to grab our waistband and we're going to start matching it up to the skirt. So remember we made that three inch mark. We're going to now fold that over at three inches. I don't know why I paused like I had a brain fart or something. But um, you're going to fold that over three inches and then you're going to pin it down to the gathered part of the skirt and you want to do this for both sides and make sure you flip them the same way I hate that I have to say stuff like that but sometimes I feel like I do and and it's understandable because especially as rookies we make a lot of silly mistakes so make sure you're folding them the right way right here I'm just making sure um, that it's distributed evenly again and that it does fit within my waistband opening. Okay, so now grab your waist waistband and right sides together. Um, you wanna start pinning this to your overskirt. And I'm pinning on the side that does have the interfacing on it. Not sure if this matters, but I just, I come up with reasons in my head for everything. So in my head, this gives it more stability. I don't know. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to pin it all the way down to the other side. Now, this is where you'll go back and start adjusting it again if it's too long or too short. Um, so I'm just kind of playing with the gathers a little bit more to get it right and to match it up.
Okay, um, so now, yet again, I'm kind of, once I got my two ends pinned, and I know that it's the length that I want, now I'm just going to kind of play with the gathers again because I want them to look really, really nice and really, really neat. I don't want it to be big and bunched up in certain areas and then, you know, not in the other areas. Okay, so you want to lay it to where your waistband is on top, and which means your inner facing is facing up, and you want to go from that notch you cut and you wanna sew all the way down to the other end, sewing a half an inch away from the edge. Okay, so now we're going to take the other side of our waistband, um, the uninterfaced side, and we're gonna flip it over. So we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna match up with that stitch line that we made. You see that right there? So you wanna fo uh, fold that over and pin it down. And you wanna do this all the way down to the other side. Now I'm just going to top stitch all the way down um, from where the skirt part starts uh, to where it ends. And I'm going to top stitch about an eighth an inch away from the edge. When you're done, the last thing that you want to do is attach your clasps or your hooks and eyes to the front so you can close it. All right, you guys. So this is what the final skirt looks like like i said earlier if you want to add tool um to make it fuller on the inside um, or if you want to line it then those are options as well um but i'll be doing more in-depth tutorials i just wanted to do the basic easy quick one for you guys first and i'm going to press this out a little bit while steam it out um but yeah all done